Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and today we're going to talk about massive upside. That's right, the players that we think might be able to outperform their ADP. We're talking players post-50 and maybe even post-150 ADP, and you're saying, oh my goodness, already we're targeting these players? My answer to you is yes. That's right. That's what we get paid to do. Andrew Erickson, Derek Brown, and myself are going to give you some names, and we're going to sell you on why they could be players with massive upside that can really change the tenor of your league. And we're going to get to those names in just a second. Before we do, don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube right now, subscribe and click that little bell till it goes ding for notifications because we've got amazing content, the short form videos. We've got all the podcasts on here. And of course, all the amazing in-season content. we got great guests lined up for the month of July. You're going to want to be a part of Fantasy Pros if you aren't already, which I'm pretty sure you are. But anyway, gentlemen, it's a great time to talk about football. We are approaching quickly, obviously, uh, the heart of draft season. It's going to be upon us before you can blink. And it's important to start identifying these players now, especially for people who have early drafts going on. So let's start with one of your players, Derek Brown, that is right outside the top 50 that you think could be a value in drafts that might have some big upside in 2023. This player is going screaming up the board. And I talked about him out on Twitter, man. 2021 Miles Sanders of wide receivers. That is Deontay Johnson, guys. Everything that could have possibly gone wrong for Deontay went wrong last year. He got all of the volume we wanted to see. 13th in target share, top 10 in red zone targets. Problem is, he didn't score any touchdowns. So he was wide receiver 39 in fantasy points per game. I'm chasing the volume and I'm chasing the talent. Deontay's going to have a massive bounce back year, guys. And yes, you could toss Kenny Pickett along for the ride because if Deontay's doing better, Kenny Pickett's coming with him. But Deontay, I got him as a top 24 wide receiver this year, and everybody should as well. The talent's there. This guy led all wide receivers in open score. He's going to bounce back. Top 24 is definitely in the range of outcomes. I'm going to say massive upside for 2023. <laughs> well, I like that because it's not like we're so far removed from Deontay Johnson being one heck of a PPR wide receiver. It's just obviously when you transition in a quarterback season, like they did last year in Pittsburgh, there's going to be some lows. You would hope that there would be some highs. There weren't as many, but maybe Kenny Pickett does make that incremental developmental move forward. And if so, DJ looks like he could be a good pick. Let's go for you, Andrew Erickson. Give me somebody between ADP 50 and 100 that you think might have some big time upside. Going to the running back position here with Los Angeles Rams running back Cam Akers, mm. who Sean McVay has now voiced that he likes now, as opposed <laughs> to last year when he wanted to had nothing to do with Cam Akers, to which was a big problem for me because I like Cam Akers a lot last year. But I'm back in. Look, he just turned 24 years old. He's a young running back, and he showed he flashed RB1 upside last year over the final six weeks, led the NFL in rushing yards. Now we expect this offense to bounce back overall. Matthew Stafford's back. Cooper Cup's back. Cam Akers is the RB1. Who else is in that backfield that's going to compete for touches with Cam Akers? Sony Michelle, 2.9 yards per carry last year. No, I've seen Sony Michelle play. It's not him. Kyron Williams, Zach Evans. Like, these are just a bunch of jabronis. Mm. It's Cam Akers season, baby, in 2023. Wheels up. Yes. Is it Cam Akers season, though, Erickson? Because it has to be at this point. I mean, maybe not because Sean McVay wants it to be, or you just think it's uh, out of necessity at this point. I do think to an extent there is some need for him to get the ball there for the Los Angeles Rams. And I think it's important to realize he's another year removed from this Achilles injury. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was able to overcome that injury in the first place, he That's came true. back in a calendar <laughs> year that matters so much for a running back's explosiveness. So I think what Akers showed displayed last year is not being baked in enough. I mean, he's going outside the top 50. You don't have to pay a lot to get him. And I feel way comfortable gap drafting him as my RB two because he's going to be a workhorse. Yeah, uh, it's funny because Fitzy, Pat Fitzmorris, also kind of feels the same way about Cam Akers. I just read uh, one of our featured pros pieces that we have over at fantasypros.com um, about some of the breakouts. I think it was 24 breakout candidates to draft, and Fitz and a few other people had Cam Akers on that list too. So there's even deeper dive on that. Uh, if you want to read that article too, if you go to fantasypros.com slash breakout, you can see all the 24. But just like you laid out there, Fitz did the same thing where he's laying out the same exact concepts of why Cam Akers is a value who has a lot of upside. Uh, Debro, in the same range, give me another guy that you think might be able to uh, be a good return on investment and has a lot more upside than we realize. 
I mean, I'm, we're talking about breakouts. I'm going to sit here and make the bet that Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to break out in his rookie season. I mean, we talk all about, okay, the ability to earn targets and, okay, it could be muddy and stuff. Can we also talk about the contingent upside of Jackson Smith and Jigba? If DK Metcalf or Tower Lockett go down, if you're talking about a guy right now, you're probably drafting as a wide receiver three who has wide receiver two, wide receiver one, possibly upside. Because as good as DK and Tower Lockett have been, we've never seen Tower Lockett be a heavy target commanding wide receiver. He's never ranked inside the top 36 as far as target per route run rate. And if we believe that Jackson Smith and Jigba is that dude, I do, then what are we talking about? You, we don't believe that he has the ability to earn targets. He has the first round draft pedigree. He has all the other measurables we look for. He was more athletic than people gave him credit for. And also in college, in that massive breakout season, while he was earning targets amongst other first-round future wide receivers, he also showed the ability to win downfield, which I don't think people give him enough credit for. He was tied for first in PFF's deep receiving grade. He was ninth in yards per route run down the field that year. So I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is one, a guy who can win on the outside and the inside. He has wide receiver three, wide receiver two type of ability for this season. Mm. And if one of these wide receivers goes down, he could be a wide receiver one in his right. first year. Well, and that, I, I mean, why do we discount that? That I completely agree with. So in terms of the upside of injury being there for JSN, it's there. But is it contingent? Is that upside completely contingent on injury? Because it feels like, to me, it is. Nope. I'm a guy that's taking Tyler Lockett. I'm taking DK Metcalf because they're the established guys, and Lockett's got one year left on his contract. You say no. You say he can get there anyway. What brings you to that point if everybody stays healthy that JSN can still outperform the ADP? Because if we believe that it, targets are earned, and they're earned based off of talent— then we should believe that Jackson Smith and Jigba can earn that type of target share. And the other part about it, like I talked about, I think Tyler Lockett goes back into being a field stretching role this year. That's what he's been for most of his career outside of maybe last year, the year before, and his A dot went down. So I think the way this offense revolves around JSN earning underneath targets, getting some shots down the field, DK is going to compete with him. And I think Lockett, as good as Lockett is, and as good as I think he can be again for this season, I think his volume maybe dips a little bit and he goes back into being the downfield threat. Okay. Uh, Andrew Erickson, give me another guy in this range between ADP 50 and 100 that you think has massive upside. It's my favorite tight end to draft in fantasy football right now. It's Darren Waller. <laughs> Over the last six weeks of the season, he's the leader in tight end yards per route run. He finished second in top six finisher rate at 38%, second to only Travis Kelsey. Like, when you're going through the tight ends, who's going to be tight end two? Like, Darren Waller has just as good a chance of finishing as the second tight end overall than every other tight end. And yet, he goes so much later than the George Kittles and the Hawkinsons of the world, where I see it as Darren Waller has a direct path to being the number one wide receiver, pass catcher on the Giants. Like, why? I don't understand the why he's so cheap. I get people well, are concerned I do. about I, I understand the, why he's the so injuries. Cheap. Yeah, I think it is because I think Guys, you could argue that although he could be tight end too, uh, last year he finished as um, tight end 25. So I think that's why he's so cheap. People want to mitigate their risk a little bit. I think that's the reason, don't you? That's what I would guess, but aren't we shooting? Is this is the upside show? We're not talking about risk. We're talking about upside. Okay, that's fair. This is the show we're talking about upside. And look, I can't deny Waller's upside. Let's not talk about the downside. Let's be positive, Pete's instead. We're gonna do that. <laughs> All positive people here talking about positive things. You're right, and I think tight end is one of those spots that where he's going. You know, he, some of the names around there: Pat Frymuth, Evan Ingram, David Njoku. If you're wrong, the replacement value at tight end. You could probably find somebody off the waiver wire like Jawan Johnson last year, right? A perfect example of a guy you could plug and play and actually had some good games. So I think if you're going to be wrong on somebody being wrong and down on Waller makes a lot more sense. Let's move the needle, gentlemen. Let's push it a little bit further back. Players from ADP 100 to 150. Derek Brown, give me somebody that's got massive upside. It's got to be Quentin Johnson. There we go. That's where this conversation has All to start. All year. And Let's do it. Again talking about in a similar spot of Jackson Smith and Jigba, but people aren't paying as much in ADP to get a guy that's again, 
first round wide receiver talent in one an offense that I think is going to lead the, the league in passing attempts this year and that shouldn't surprise anybody Justin Herbert's only been second in passing attempts and passing yards in each of the last two seasons so now you're going to add more weapons on top of it and you got Kellen Moore who has never finished outside the top two in neutral script pace ever as an offensive coordinator the Chargers are going to throw the ball one massive ton this year. And Quentin Johnson, I think he is going to be used in a great, versatile role. We're talking about a guy that I think that can get lined up in the slot. And yes, that's going to push Keenan Allen outside. Keenan Allen can still win outside. But Quentin Johnson led all FBS wide receivers in yak, uh, per reception and slot yards per route run as well as being a fantastic deep threat and we know in Kellen Moore's offense they are going to push the ball down the field more than they ever did under Joe Lombardi so Quentin Johnston again we're talking about upside if Keenan Allen or Mike Williams miss time hell if Quentin Johnston has the talent to supplant Mike Williams as the wide receiver two in this offense mm -hmm. 100 plus 120 targets in his rookie season yeah that's possible well, to me Johnson not only is the future he's the president uh mike williams is never Agreed. on the field so I, i'm all in on this one and mm -hmm. and i feel the same way about this as i felt a couple years ago in the rookie season of amon ross st brown but i'm gonna learn my lesson which is be patient for the first six weeks mm -hmm. like if it doesn't pop right away just be patient because we all know how that other story ended and sometimes you got to look at some of these rookie wide receivers and give them a little bit of patience as they get their feet wet some guys are going to hit the ground running it's going to be great uh, but Quentin Johnson is one of these guys that I just see that pathway there for him. And I see that need for him potentially sooner than later. So hopefully those two things cross. Uh, Andrew Erickson, give me somebody in this range, 100 to 150, that you think has massive upside. Outside the top 100, I like Anthony Richardson, the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts at Florida. Richardson averaged 60 rushing yards per game. When we're talking upside, we're talking about quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. It's all about the mobility and the rushing yards that they can put up. So Richardson... Do I expect him to be guns blazing from a passing perspective when he makes his debut in the NFL? Not really. I, I really don't. You know, he didn't get, he didn't start a lot of games in college. And you look at some of these other quarterbacks that coming in, they didn't start a lot of games, didn't have a lot of passing attempts. Trey Lance's, Mitchell Trubisky's, Mark Sanchez. Like, they didn't put up good passing numbers as rookies. But that's kind of to be expected. But the floor that Richardson is going to offer, and then you add the gravy that could be any type of passing step that he takes, whether it's, from week 11 onwards to the fantasy football playoffs, which matter more for your fantasy team than what he does in week one and week two. I think Anthony Richardson has back end QB one upside this year. And I think he can really develop into a top five player as the season progresses. He is actually the number 10 player on my recent video on uh, fantasy bros, YouTube channel of league winners. He was number 10 for the same reasons. Erickson saying in those single quarterback leagues, you could be aggressive, take him, give him some time you can go draft a golf you can draft an aaron Rodgers. you could draft some of these boring quarterbacks that you know are just going to be fine at the back end of qb1 and you might have a rocket in your pocket with anthony richardson you might have somebody super special there here are the fantasy pros projections for him erickson 3153 yards passing do you think that's too high i think that's fine you know <laughs> people on prop people probably underestimate like the well, look at Justin Fields, going to put right? up. Justin Fields didn't come <laughs> you know, quite close to no, that number. You know, but... Daniel Jones doesn't come quite close to those numbers sometimes too. So Richardson, to me, that seems a little bit high in year one for me. Well, I think it also is projecting him to start all the games, which you don't necessarily mm -hmm. know. Like that's what I think is going to happen. I mean, you're not drafting Anthony Richardson because that's you think fair. Gardner Mitchell is going to start the first three weeks, which at this point in time, we still don't necessarily know. I still think it's going to be Richardson in week one. That makes the most sense to mm -hmm. me, but they're going to do the lip service. Well, you know, Gardner Minshew knows the offense a little bit more. It's like, okay, yeah, they got to say this. And after week three of the preseason, they're like, yep, Anthony Richardson, he's our guy. Right. Shocker. And we took yeah. him, you know, with a top five pick. So I think with Richardson, it's just, look, if he's running, he's going to be fine in fantasy. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of the steps that he takes as he progresses. Because there's going to be games as a passer where it's going to look ugly. Like we've gone through this with a lot of passers, Justin Fields, Kyler Murray's rookie year. Sure. People were laughing at Kyler Murray. It's like, oh my God, this guy, can't, like, what is up with this guy? He's just running around scrambling, running for his life. Lamar Jackson, his rookie year. Like, they Jalen all struggled Hurts. as, Jalen Hurts, they struggled as passers. But eventually, the more reps they get in, and the advantage Richardson gets from some of those other guys is he's going to be the starter most likely from day one. You know, that wasn't Lamar Jackson's case. That wasn't the case with Jalen Hurts. Kyler Murray was QB7 as a rookie. Wait, but he was a first-round pick. 
Like, mm-hmm. why can't Anthony Richardson do what Kyler Murray did as a rookie? So those are the reasons why I think you should be on Anthony Richardson, especially in home leagues where he's not going to be, you know, QB 10, QB 11, where you're seeing him yeah. on underdog and some of these sharper draft rooms. He's going to be QB 15, 16, 17, where you want to take the the chance with him. Right. And you take the chance early is what we're saying. You go around early or whatever, and then you can back it up much easier in the single quarterback leagues. Kyler Murray, rookie season, 3,700 passing yards, higher than I realized it was, to be honest with you. Uh, looking back to, to some of the other ones that last year, Daniel Jones finally got over 3,200 his rookie year, 3,000. 2020, 2900, 24, 28. Again, just trying to give you some range on some of the quarterbacks who are using their legs a little bit. Justin Fields, now last year, just 2200 passing yards. So I think for Richardson to get over 3000 would be, that's like the best case scenario personally. But again, you can go look at all those projections. I, I, I would also too. not get hung up on the passing yards again. Oh, like, I'm not. He's going to score I just think more points. If people see the but passing that's, yards. But that's why he's cheap. Right. Like, because people are concerned about all oh, the passing. Like, is the passing going to be there? It's like and that's when you not, look at right. Daniel Jones, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, when these guys were starting games as rookies, they were averaging 17 to 19 fantasy points per game. Like that's kind of the rate that I was kind of looking at when I was looking at the starts that they made as even Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. Trey Lance was horrible as a passer. And the three games that he played the most for a rookie, he was still averaging 18 fantasy points per game. That is in the QB 10 to QB 12 range. If Richardson is horrible passer, but is running, he's going to be a back end fantasy QB one. And then if he takes steps, like I've said, as a passer, then he's going to get into the top eight and then into the top five. So that's the bullish case for Anthony Richardson. And look, Thanks for my TED talk. Yeah, Thanks for coming. Wonderful. I'm so glad I made it. Uh, luckily, there's a buffet <laughs> afterwards. That's really the only reason I bought the ticket. Uh, but look, even Richardson in best ball contests, like on DraftKings, too, you get $10 million in guaranteed cash prizes. It's up for grabs if you join the biggest best ball contest today. And you get your first entry back in DraftKings dollars when you do. So you can enter the DraftKings Best Ball Millionaire Contest and snake draft your team for the season. Each week, you'll automatically rack up points for your top scores. No ads, no drops, no trades. Just fun. So the teams uh, with the most points by the end of the season will have a shot to take home a $1 million top prize. So head to DraftKings app and sign up with the promo code FANTASYPROS when you do. Join the DraftKings $10 million Best Ball Tournament and get your first entry back in DraftKings dollars again. Fantasy pros. That's the code to sign up today. That's pretty easy to remember. Derek Brown, give me another player that I should remember in this range as massive upside. Well, we talked about Jalen Hurts. I'm just going to stay with the Eagles here. Rashad Penny, baby. Like I want to be investing in Rashad Penny. And yes, the only reason Rashad Penny is going this low is one. Everybody still loves Deandre Swift. He is going (laughs) incredibly higher than Rashad Penny. And I don't really understand it because in this offense, we want the early down runner, and I think as long as he is healthy, and I get that's a big if for people, it's going to be Rashad Penny. What he's flashed in his career when he has been on the field has been nothing short of fantastic. I mean, since 2006, he's the only running back in the NFL to eclipse 4.5 yards after contact per attempt. That is a ludicrous mark. He has led the league in that metric over the last two seasons. Now you're airdropping Rashad Penny into an Eagles offense that was 10th in neutral rushing rate, and we're talking about scoring opportunities. We just saw Miles Sanders get double-digit rushing touchdowns. That's because they were fourth in red zone scoring attempts per game. I mean... Sanders was an RB2 last year, and Rashad Penny runs laps around Miles Sanders as far as a natural talent and a rushing talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to be investing a ton in Rashad Penny. I'm with you. I love this investment. Uh, The ROI potential is great, and in terms of the fact that he's going so late, there's no negative. If he gets hurt again and underperforms or DeAndre Swift becomes somebody that everybody wants DeAndre Swift to be and actually happens for a change— Okay, you take the L and you move on. But to me, this is a win-win. I love these names that you guys have come up with in this range. This post-100 group is really good. So, Erickson, don't screw it up here with a bad one. Give me another good name. <laughs> I This is one of my favorites, to be totally honest. And probably one of the guys I'm drafting the most in the best ball drafts, Damian Harris for the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. Look, everything about his profile just screams, hey, you're looking for this year's Jamal Williams. Damian Harris is that guy. One year removed. From 15 touchdowns and over 900 rushing yards as the Patriots yeah. lead running back. And yes, he dealt with injuries last year and got outplayed by Ramondre Stevenson. But even when Damian Harris was healthy last year, he was still carving out a little bit of a role alongside Stevenson. And the Patriots still used him in the red zone where they were horrible, but they still used Damian Harris. And that was probably also contributed to the reason why they were so bad in the red zone because they didn't have a guy like Damian Harris. Mm-hmm. So 
we're looking at this Buffalo Bills backfield. James Cook is the explosive pass catcher out of the backfield. But I want the red zone guy. Like, who's going to be the red zone back? And last year, De- Devin Singletary saw 80% of the running back carries inside the red zone for the Buffalo Bills. He's now in Houston. Now, the issue is Josh Allen as a mobile runner that they like to use as a battering ram at the goal line at times. He steals a lot of those touchdowns. So that's always a concern that can make Damian Harris not as appealing. But as Josh Allen gets up there in age, as mm-hmm. the Bills are invested in him long term, makes sense to me that, hey, like, let's not use him as a battering ram. Instead, use this battering ram running back that we signed in free agency that has destroyed us on the yeah. ground for multiple years. We've seen the highlights of Damian Harrison running all over the Buffalo Bills for multi-touchdown games. So for me, where Damian Harris goes, especially in half PPR where touchdowns matter so much, I can't believe he's this cheap. He's a high Hawk Dane offense. And he's a good running back. He's not a running back mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, we're hoping he falls into the end zone. Like he can score from outside the 20. Right. He's, like, he's, he's a, a good running back from because this is the Patriot way. You don't get second contracts as exactly. a running back. So yep. it's not a knock on Harris. It's just the, the way they do things over there. And to me, Buffalo, you know, finding balance to this offense is key to them. You know, sometimes they get very pass happy and and if they can find the balance with Damian Harris, I'm with you. I love this guy too. I think this is a great massive upside pick. And I wonder too about the chicken and the egg scenario where you're talking about like Josh Allen being used as the battering ram, right? Well, maybe that's because of necessity because they didn't have that guy to hand the ball off to and be the goal line back. So if Harris can do all those things and maybe James Cook can, you know, take a little step forward, it's good for the offense overall in Buffalo and their chances to win that division. Uh, Let's move on slide the needle a little further this time let's go deeper give me some names outside the top 150 in adp that have massive upside now this might be a little trickier so there's more contingencies that might have to take place for these guys to reach that upside but doesn't matter we're gonna talk about him anyway Derek brown give me a name marvin mims I, I, he is going to be one of my most highly drafted players in best ball right now and i'm going to be snagging him over on ffpc i look we cannot deny the talent of marvin mims Sean Payton traded up to this, get this guy, 90th, 96th percentile breakout age, 4.3 speed, and I know everybody's going to think of immediately, but is he going to start because of Tim Patrick? Oh, okay, so we're worried about Tim Patrick, who's getting blurbs of being the possibly the best wide receiver on the team. Come on, man. I never lived, I heard. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was at once the consensus best wide receiver four in the NFL. Real life and, and, and wide receiver four he shall remain i mean that <laughs> you know he's got a career 1.4 yards per route run are we that concerned with tim patrick also coming off of significant injury no i'm going to sit here and push my chips to the middle on a blazing fast rookie that the team traded up to get that every other thing that has come out of that they have said marvin mims is going to be a big part of what we do and if he makes the starting lineup this year he's going to win down the field he's going to have spike week games this is a guy in two of the last three seasons in college he was top 24 in yards per route run we know the skill set that he has and if russell wilson again this is also making a bet on russell wilson bouncing back Mm -hmm. which is a bet i am firmly comfortable in making this year and if he bounces back marvin mims is going along for the ride all right erickson give me a name outside top 150 in ADP that you think has massive upside. I'm going to go with another rookie wide receiver here, Jonathan Mingo, second round pick by the Carolina Panthers, because I think that he can be the number one wide receiver on this team, because looking at his competition, you got 34 year old Adam Thielen, who is following the AJ green and the Jordy Nelson career arc, where you go to a new team and basically turn to dust. And then you have the injury prone DJ Chark, who has missed seven games on average over the past three seasons. So, Mingo, yes, his production profile from Ole Miss is incomplete. It's not great. But when you're looking at him from a physical specimen standpoint, six foot two, 220 pounds, 446 speed. Like, he's probably like the best way to describe him as a poor man's DK Metcalf. So I like that. I like that upside on a team where he can step in and be the number one guy. If I'm Bryce Young, who do I want to throw the ball to? The guy that looks like Adam Thielen, that looks like my accountant, DJ Chark, who, who's out there on the crutches. No, I want to throw it to this freak. That's who I want to throw the ball to. So I think Mingo, who thrived as a deep threat at Ole Miss, which is also something great that Marvin Mims was also great at, mm-hmm. and he was also good after the catch. Tenth in the FBS among all wide receivers, least 80 targets, yards after the catch per reception. So he can win in multiple ways. 
So they can get him involved in bubble screens and he can take one to the house. He can be used downfield as a vertical threat. So there's a lot of ways that he wins and he just landed on the best depth chart in terms of him being able to ascend it at the fastest pace. So Jonathan Mingo, he was one of the guys I wrote up in the betting pros where leader, you know, dark horse leader to have the most rookie receiving yards. I looked at Jonathan Mingo because he's explosive. Yeah, well, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I know for a lot of the audience, too, you're getting acclimated with some of these names like Mingo and like Mims. And uh, I know with the draft kit out, there's a lot more information on these guys. So I encourage everybody to go there. It's free. It's fantasypros.com slash draft test kit. Excuse me. Uh, you can go and check out the draft kit. You can see the write ups that Derek and Andrew and Fitzy all have on these players. It's got a lot of position primers. You get the round by round strategies, which I'm going to be doing a video on on the YouTube channel too, like the players I want round by round. So it's a lot of deeper dive stuff. And the good news, it's free. Again, go check out the draft kit, fantasypros.com slash kit today. And if you're a premium member, of course, you get access to even more. But go check it out and start to get familiar with some of these names that we're talking about if you don't watch college football. And I know a lot of people just don't have time in their day or the inclination to do that. But these guys are going to make some impacts in 2023. Derek Brown, give me one more name outside the top 150 ADP you think can have massive upside this year. One of my favorite late round tight ends, and I have no problems if you want to call him the late round tight end, because if Anthony Richardson has a fantastic rookie season, I'm telling you, Jelani Woods is going to be breaking out this year. We want athletic mutants. We want athletic freaks, and that's what we want at tight end, because those are the guys that if you go back have broken out in a big way, and Jelani Woods can do that. We know the athletic talent that he has. The numbers also support this, guys. When he was on the field last year, he was running pass game routes. That's what we want. 58.1%. He played in the slot or out wide. He was 14th in yards per route run. And one of the biggest things that I'm tying to for that type of upside, ceiling type of outcome, is not only the athleticism, but if you go and just check out one metric, and you're saying, I'm shooting for upside at the tight end position. What do I need to look at past athleticism? Yards per route run against man coverage. All of these guys that could beat man coverage, the Travis Kelseys of the world, Mark Andrews of the world, David Njoku is up on that list. Yeah, Jelani Woods is there too. He was ninth in yards per route run against man coverage last year, immediately behind David Njoku and Evan Ingram. People are treating Jelani Woods like this is still a Frank Reich situation and they're going to rotate three tight ends through. That's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Shane Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter, the offensive coordinator, have leaned on one tight end historically. You can go back to Eric Ebron. We could talk about Hunter Henry. We could talk about Dallas Goddard. So if one guy has the talent and the skill set to step forward and be a late round tight end one this year, my bet's on Jelani Woods. Well, there's the perfect guy to pair with Waller, right? You want the upside of Waller. Yep. If it doesn't hit, maybe you take a late yep, stab yep. at Jelani Woods. You might get something out of him. All right, let's close out strong here. Give me the last name on the list post 150. Erickson, you think has some massive upside. We go with Roshan Johnson, rookie yes. running back for yes. the Chicago Bears. And I think just aiming for rookies late in drafts <laughs> is really just a good strategy in general because these are the guys that have high upside because they're unknown. Like we don't right. know a lot about them. So that's why they go so late. But when they do hit, they hit big. So with Roshan, I'm looking at this Bears backfield. You have Deontay Foreman, who I'm not a huge fan of. I love Khalil Herbert, of course, but I don't know if the Bears love him as much as I love him. So that's an issue with me because apparently the coaching staff, very they, they value pass catching ability and pass blocking ability highly in this backfield. And Roshan Johnson, that's what he did at Texas mm -hmm. while he was backing up B. John Robinson. So, and that's why a lot of people don't know about Roshan, just because he was backing up, you know, the guy that went eighth overall, who was, he was pretty good. You know, right, was I mean, he's, planet. Like, if, I mean, he's like, tell you something. He's having, watched, RB3. having watched Texas last year, uh, had Roshan played anywhere else, we'd be talking a lot more about Roshan Johnson. I'm just telling you, he just got yep. buried in there a little bit. And it's one of these things we're going to look back. You know, we look back at that LSU team and we're like, how did Joe Burrow have Jamar Chase and Justin <laughs> Jefferson on the same team? Think, think about how absurd <laughs> That just sounds like to put that all out there. And there are people who say, how in the hell did B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson play in the same backfield? They're going to look back someday and have the same conversation. They said the same thing about Miles Sanders and Saquon. I mean, I think it's a similar argument. Yeah, well, I mean, Miles hasn't had the career yet that I think people hoped for. We'll see if this year changes things. But look, these are all really great names. Again, to just kind of 
blast through him. Deontay Johnson, Cam Akers, Darren Waller, JSN, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Quentin Johnson, Anthony Richardson, Damian Harris, Rashad Penny. And then post 150, we're talking about guys like Mims, Marvin Mims, Jelani Woods, Jonathan Mingo, Roshan Johnson. And if you need more information on any of these names, go to the draft kit, fantasypros.com slash kit. That's the place to get that information, all the breakdowns, where to draft these guys and what the approach should be. Uh, and then, of course, check out the other content, too. I mentioned before that breakout article, 24 breakout candidates for the draft. It's a great piece, fantasypros.com slash breakout. Easy place to go find that. And go play some fantasy football right now. I mean, you don't have to wait. You can get advantage, uh, take advantage of the knowledge that we're dropping here and go enter that DraftKings uh, giant contest they've got going on there, the Best Ball Millionaire, where you can take advantage of these early ADPs. And when you do sign up for it, sign up with that promo code Fantasy Pros and go play the Fantasy Pros Championship too. FantasyPros.com slash championship FFPC. Somebody's going to win a million dollars there. Somebody's going to win a million dollars at DraftKings. A million dollars for winning... You know, playing a little fantasy football. That sounds pretty good to me. I don't know about all of you. So thanks for hanging out with us today. Don't forget to drop your names and your big, massive upside picks in the comments below. We love to hear from you on the YouTube channel. Like this video, share, and subscribe. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Derrickson, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.